Um, thank you, Regina. Um, thank you, uh, CCI, as well, for, for, for having me here. Um, uh, I'm just going to jump right in and then uh, just, just before I start, how many of you kind of know, I know it's a hands up thing and everybody hates it. How many of you know about creative applications on that? Just kind of curious. Okay, cool. Right. Okay. Um, so uh, a little bit of an introduction. Um, so I'm the founder and editor of creative applications on that. Um, I'm also the kind of editorial director of Holo magazine. Um, I'm a director of platform at framed. Um, and also I teach in the uh, School of Architecture at the University of Westminster. Um, so my background is in architecture. I studied architecture at the Westminster and have been teaching on the MA Architecture and Digital Media program ever since. We have some students up there. Um, and, um, and even though it's certain that the use of digital technology is now central to design education, the implications of these technologies and developments in the design field continue to provide new scope for research and design beyond the remit of standard education and practice. And even though many students are already quite conversant with conventional dig digital design tools, uh, and I'm sure that many students here are too, our focus has always been to allow students to form a critical understanding of their application and to explore possibilities for further integration of technology into design practice. So in other words, we try to critically address the implications of software, automated systems and computation in design and architecture. For the last 10 years, creativeapplications.net has been a tool to observe undergoing changes and impacts of technological development in art design, but using tools predominantly as a lens. Um, CAN, short for Creative Application on Net, has cataloged over 3,000 projects across the creative field and organized, curated, and participated in many events around the globe, but always exploring and questioning the impact of new technologies in art and design. Advances in technology continue to shape new career topologies and cross-disciplinary practice that always seems to blur the boundaries between the creative fields. So document this event is imagined as a new series of events that focuses on cross-disciplinary practice, particularly within art and design. Even more importantly, on how the work produced and communicated within these landscapes and the impact it has on culture as a whole. Our first event, Document One, is a learning program organized with a CCI around a workshop, a seminar, and a symposium. Over the last three days, we have worked with students from different uh, courses and disciplines to attempt to imagine how code could assist to their current workflows. We ask students to supersize pixels and embrace low resolution as a creative constraint. Students learn how to render rudimentary text, iconography, and images and realize a physical display system comprised of several LED bank, uh, banks. Thinking across software and hardware while engaging graphic communication is both a tangible and tectonic teams prototype their own display systems uh, uh, with outcomes that emerge from their interest or from the interest of each group. Symposium is a continuation of thinking about the technology, about how technology can, how it shapes art and design. Practice. So house rules. I think this is kind of quite important to, to, to mention because it was just, it, there's no confusion. Um, so before we go any further, I think we need to uh, set some house rules, specifically towards art and design. Here, we talk about art and design as a vehicle to interrogate facets of society, as a non-conformist practice that is free of monetary measures and is concerned with social issues as opposed to commercial gains. We see art and design as a mechanism to shape shift the present and take a peek into the future. To paraphrase McLuhan, to function as a distant early warning system that reveals cultural transformations that are already underway to the broader population. As with this one and all future uh, document events, we are hoping to address just a small fragment of topics that in one way shape this practice. I think it's important to also know that these are not attempts to straightjacket the practice in any kind of way, rather only attempt to describe the landscape it is operating in. So the document is also much more a research project as it is an event. Keeping this in mind, please be open to the kind of disjunct and sometimes unclear, or maybe 
um, unconvincing ideas that could, I suppose, be confusing or unclear. I think that's all fine. Um, it is in my mind, I think, and it has been always, the most interesting and um, flourishing place to be. Uh, it creates a, a space for dialogue and debate and conversation. So synthesis. So in this context, it is known that commercial design is a product of building relations or hybridization of technologies to uh, suit corporate needs. Uh, in a non-commercial environment, what we consider innovation is something that comes from adapting new and old technologies to current contexts, drawing new narratives, or situating technologies within current near future parallel speculative or, or fictional scenarios. It could also be said the difference between the kind of commercial and non-commercial synthesis of technologies is predominantly based on intent and context, on whether we are attempting to contextualize or decontextualize or adapt some ideas. Here, the artist and designer is not driven by a scope to service industry, rather interrogate, interrogate facets of society, and in doing so, creates a critical window into present or into the future. So abundance. So internet, what was once thought to be a cultural renaissance, has become an economic uh, revolution, to quote uh, Douglas Rushkov here. Um, it has brought upon an indefinite amount of technological advance, bypassing any social or cultural critique. New technologies are deployed without any consent to the end user, any regulation or guideline. It is driven by corporate need to condition, control, predict, and anticipate our next move. Education is mostly skill-based, and close links to the industry are highly valued. Learning is prioritized over teaching. As a result, in the design field specifically, we notice a kind of techno-solutionist urge, i.e. technological uh, advancement for the sake of advancement to service the kind of corporate gains. What Max Weber would describe as specialist without spirit fit for the iron cage. So the products we consume are all part of a uh, infinite cycle of demand and supply without much need for, uh, with much consideration for need. And all of this exists within an endless technological landscape that we feel have very little, that we have very little control over. Convolution. Um, just as the Barbican exhibition continues to tour their mm -hmm. digital revolution exhibition, we are now beginning to talk about counter-revolution. So reversing the processes from the scale to locality, escaping years of technological regress, one would call it that, defying algorithmic futures and machine-based logic towards celebrating an individuality, diversity, sensibility and randomness. So if art and design have a single purpose today, it will be to interrogate uh, these conditions. So as a result, there's a need for a new role uh, for, uh, so there's a, there's a need for roles as creatives to shift away from techno uh, solutionist ideals towards um, assessing and reflecting upon our conditions. How do we rethink our practices, artists and designers and what is our role here? So taking this diagram of speculative design, for example, um, and uh, this is just a small list of those that may begin to think, how you may begin to think differently about a practice. I am, however, certain that artists and designers that you are about to hear today will provide a probably better insight into possible paths forward. One thing, though. Um, what I think is important is that creative practice needs to shift away from sole output towards research, grounding itself in the past, present, and future, and in doing so, becoming an active participant in the conversation. So Christopher Frank at the RCA some 20 years or so attempted to describe what kind of research happens in the design schools. Although a little bit dated, still very relevant, he describes the difference between into, through, and for art and design. 
So Intu refers to examining existing or maybe historical practices in the design or art field. Um, four refers to the benefit or advancement of art and design. And what we are primarily interested in here is using research through design um, or art and design, i.e. using art and design as a vehicle to interrogate a particular uh, subject area. So he writes, the young designer has become an imagineer, necrologist of images and signs, and styles from within the urban wasteland. At the other end, the research scientist is orderly. He intends to be, uh, well, it tends to be he usually, in popular images, has conjured their hypothesis, and he sets about proving or disapproving them according to a set of orderly procedures. His subjects exist outside himself, so he must submerge into subjectivity, so submerge his subjectivity and personality in order to study it. And this is true that since the 19th century, artists had difficulty persuading people of the connection of art with research. So how can we categorize or begin to understand research through art and design? Context. So clearly defining context within which one operates stating precedents, thinkers, events in history, movements, etc. Uh, it's, 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 it's an area that expands and grows as we learn more. Methodology. So what methods are we using to interrogate the subject area? Are there any precedents, works, or ideas that correlate and align with what we're trying to do? Drawings, images, photographs, code, video, film, models, installations, etc. They are kind of our vehicles, they're tools. Can we make our own tools? open source the tools, or uh, participate in open source projects, build on them, develop them, contribute to them. Positioning and situating uh, your projects alongside the work by other artists and designers. And finally, kind of critiquing on work and others' work, participate in dialogue and debate. And probably what I kind of personally consider one of the kind of the most important processes in, in this, in this, which is the document. And I think it's quite common for the creators to think of the workflow as a project, followed by a documentation of the work they produce. I'd like to suggest a kind of an alternative or thinking about documentation as an integral part of the project, one that both nurtures and critiques the process. Documentation holds a dialogue between the creator and the audience, and thus an important element of the project, if not the project itself. Here, separating the kind of the, 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 the outputs from the core, each output kind of acts like a, like, a, um, like a door entry point into the project and into the research. These also become bridges into other creative fields, disciplines or conversations. There is much more to say about this, and having observed the way artists and designers generally document their work for the past 10 years, uh, there is much more work to do here. I think this kind of brings me really to an end of this. I didn't want this intro to be too long. Um, and I think the, kind of the artists that you're gonna see kind of now, it's pro they're probably gonna give you a much better kind of view or insight into what I might be kind of talking about here. Um, so I want to kind of hand it over really to, to, uh, to a next speaker. Um, but I think, but I think b before I do, I think just an amazing video that shows group of uh, cells in action, expanding processing to uh, pr expanding processing to the neighbors and form new connections or retracting their processes because they are no longer needed. This is how the learning works in our brains. And I hope really, I really truly hope that our speakers will force you to kind of make new connections or or maybe disconnect the not so important ones, informing or setting a path for your own practice. And finally, I want to thank again uh, UAL and CCI for giving me this opportunity and hoping that document one is a start of something new and exciting that can evolve and grow with every edition.